Let's go ahead and go over some of the code we're gonna be writing in this series. If you wanna follow along with me, you can go to our GitHub, which is on cfe.sh slash GitHub, and then just navigate into the Django Flix repository. So we're really focusing on the code here because the front end, well, it's simply not impressive. More of the impressiveness comes from the back end structure, how the models work more than how the templates look or even any sort of front end at this point. So let's go ahead and jump into the SRC folder and navigate into the playlists app and then into models.py. This to me is like the key thing. Hopefully this is what hooks you is the point. And so what we've got here is pretty standard imports. Maybe you've seen some of these, maybe you haven't. Uh, but then we also have a fairly standard query set model, but maybe a new thing that you've never seen before, which is using an actual other class with a constant uh, associated to it. So that is actually pretty cool. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Next, we do a little bit more of an advanced query set lookup uh, by using Q lookups. This is just a quick and easy way to do a search like we see here. And then the next one is something maybe you've never seen before, which is kind of looking based off of two different types. So these are actually model types, but they're not really model types. They're just actually stored database entries, but we treat them as almost different models. And that's because of proxy models, which I'll show you in a moment. The playlist manager itself, not really that complicated of a thing. It just allows us to bring in that query set to do things like movie or show. So now if we scroll down a little bit, we see our playlist model. And you notice this new playlist type choices. So if you've used choices before in a character field, this might be a new format of how it works for you. But the nice thing is it's a lot easier to reference the values in this choices. Way, way easier and less prone for errors. And you betcha, we definitely test to make sure that that's the case as well. Um, so the model for the playlist model is actually not really that complicated itself. Um, if it looks really complicated to you, this is probably outside of what you should be starting with. You should probably go back to using one of our tri Django series. Now, if there's a few pieces that are like, wait a minute, how does that work? Like this mini to mini field or these generic relations, we cover those things. We cover all of this stuff, but the idea is I don't want you to be overwhelmed right now with this code. So if we actually scroll down a little bit, this is probably my favorite part of this series. Not really the instance methods, although those are nice. It's cool to use instance methods for sure, but really this movie proxy, right? So what a model proxy does is it inherits everything from another model, but it doesn't actually create a new table in the database. It's really, really nice. And it allows me to do query sets or model managers based off of that proxy model. So I can actually kind of augment how I look at some of my data in my entire project. It's really, really cool. And of course I talk about overriding the save method because a proxy model, it's actually pretty critical to have a overriding save method to change generally what the type of the model might be. So having, you know, a drop down choices for what any given model might end up being, in this case, it's a movie proxy, or you see a TV show proxy, and then you also see a TV show season proxy. All of these are actually the same model at their core, but they're just treated a little differently inside of Django, which we can actually see in our views. Notice all of the tests here. Yes, we go into a lot of tests, but in our views, what we see is the actual, uh, we have a search view, but now we actually see the proxies in action. So if you've used class-based views before, you'll see that, hey, it's just a list view and it's using that proxy. This gives me almost a completely different model without being a completely different model. It's really, really cool and I really enjoy working with those things. Have I said that already? All right, so that's pretty much the walkthrough. Now, of course, the tests themselves, we actually get pretty comprehensive with these tests. I wanna make sure that you know not only how to test things, but also how to test the proxy models themselves because it is actually rather important. Now, do we cover every possible test you could do? Well, no, of course not. That's outside the context of this, but the purpose is to really hone in on the tests that are necessary to ensure that not only our regular models work as intended, but also our proxy models, all of our receivers and signals. There's a lot of stuff going on here. 
So if you do have questions on the walkthrough, please let me know. Otherwise, let's go ahead and actually get our project started.